Welcome back, true spacers of any gender expression. It's time for another thrilling adventure of Dick Rogers Space Detective. We've got a great episode for you this week. This one gets pretty weird. Yeah, it definitely shows us a bit of a different side of Dick Rogers. This episode from 1956 shows us a solo space detective living and working on a space station. And really enjoying the <clears throat> scenery. Yes, he does seem to be very interested in interspecies, um, cooperation. <laughs> but before we get rolling, we felt like we should apologize for what happened here in the studio last time. <clears throat> Eleanor. I'm sorry for how I acted while I was inebriated on the last episode. And? I want to apologize. Publicly on the podcast for some reason. For peer pressuring Mike. And for vomiting on him. Wait, that wasn't my vomit? Well, some of it might have been. I guess the last episode, I was the skeevy one. Ew. I suppose I should apologize, too. I am very sorry for the way my drunken antics affected the audio, audio quality of our last episode. And I'd like to add that if any of our listeners are struggling with any kind of substance abuse issues, it is always worth speaking to a professional or trusted confidant. I hate to be a buzzkill, but things of that nature don't just get better on their own. Thank you both. We don't want to make anyone feel bad about drinking, but we also don't want to glamorize it. Yeah, we definitely don't want to promote or glorify overconsumption of alcohol in any way. Right. So now we'll join our hero for today's episode, Dick Rogers and the Zenglorpian Problem. Yeah, join him at the bar! Hey, can you grab me a whiskey when you get the chance? Yeah, yeah, give me a second here. The bar was really hopping tonight. If you've never seen a space station bar, there's probably no amount of description that would bring the scene to life for you. But the brave and enterprising souls who dare live free in space, the view is rewarding. The universe has brought together so many beautiful forms of life. Big, small, smooth. Furry. Soft. Hard. Yeah, talking to yourself again, huh? What? <laughs> anyway, here's your whiskey. Thanks. You're a lifesaver. Hey, didn't you say you had a job tonight? Yeah, I was uh, just getting ready to head out. The job will be outside of the hull, and you know how cold it gets out there. Just needed some alcohol to warm me up. That'll be 42 credits for the drinks, then, before you go. Sure. No problem. Thanks. Keep your nose clean. Yeah, whatever nose is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an all-new thrilling episode of The Adventures of Dick Rogers, Space Detective. Brought to you by our partners at Zithrax Industries. Tonight, your hero and mine, Dick Rogers, goes on a routine stakeout and ends up in mortal danger. There's murder afoot, a dazzling damsel, and alien weaponry in play, all in tonight's adventure, The Zenglorpian Problem. But before we get to this week's riveting mystery, we have a word from those friendly folks at Zithrax Industries. One of the world's most well-known truisms goes, good fences make good neighbors. If that's true, to have the best neighbors, you need the best fence. The Zithrax Good Neighbor Fence. Standing nine feet tall, made of eight inch by three inch thick stainless steel slats set with a mere quarter inch gap between them, the good neighbor will make sure your property line is unmistakable. But that's not all. The slats continue into the ground to a depth of five feet, and the piece de resistance, this tremendous work, of the fence maker's art is crowned with coils of electrified razor wire. Whether you're concerned with the dangers of an increasingly hostile world, or just want to keep what's yours, the good neighbor will let your community know what kind of hospitality you'll provide. The good neighbor fence. The best fence makes the best neighbors. It was the kind of night that makes your hair stand on end inside of your helmet. And was it just the lack of gravity? Here was another all-night stakeout, 
just me and my camera magnetically clamped to the outside of a habitat like a peeping Tom. But at least the peeping was good. I was here to see if my client's breeding partner was making time with his broodmate. The Glorpian anatomy is considerably different from humans, but I understand the appeal. She had the kind of carapace you could really suction your proboscis to. And although she had been home alone all night, I'd taken a few video stills for my own perusal later on. It's tough being a private eye in a space station 100 light years from the nearest rocky planet, but there was a considerable amount of money to be made vacuuming rare elements from gas giants, and where there's money, you're going to have crime. But this wasn't a crime. She wasn't even cheating. Just having a little solo fun doing some vacuuming of her own. My client called around two. Hey, Dick. How's it floating? Who says it's floating at all? Your partner's putting on quite a show. You mean my... Broodmate is here right now? No, she's just enjoying herself by herself. I could forward you a couple of image files. Never seen a suction toy quite like that one. <laughs> you bastard. I got off work early, so I'm actually on my way home now. You can take off as soon as you see my shuttle. That is, if you can navigate with your faceplate all steamed up. Don't worry, I've got the anti-fog coating. Looks like you can rest easy, though. She's even watching a video of the two of you while she's doing her thing. I am both glad to hear that and afraid that I'll vomit thinking about you watching. We both know that being watched as part of the Zenglorpian mating ritual... I know she's not technically mating by herself, but I consider it my duty as a culturally sensitive being. Culturally being's. sensitive, my... <laughs> Why don't you just take off? The, the credits should be in your account now. I'd say it's a pleasure doing business with you, but it looks like the pleasure is mostly hers. If you ever want me to look after her again, let me know. I doubt it. Uh, could you send those video files? They're all yours. And just like that, I would be heading home before the sun cleared the horizon and starting giving the cooling system of my suit a real workout. I disengaged and fired up my maneuvering thrusters, heading for the nearest airlock. After a night like this, I was going to need a drink and hopefully some company. And I knew just where I could find at least one of the two. Glorjax isn't an exclusive bar, but the place wasn't without a certain amount of class. They kept the artificial gravity on and everything. That way you could drink your poison of choice with an authentic dirty glass instead of sucking it out of a sterile pouch like the cheap places. They even had a steamy floor show if progillions trip your trigger. Some folks get weird about interspecies relations, but I guess I've always had a bit of a hair trigger, if you know what I mean. Oh wait, my translator, I need to adjust it. Would I be asking you, what'll it be? I'll have a 15 year old single malt scotch. Neat. <sighs> and I'll have a 200 year old tavern in oldie London Townie. If you bring in a bottle, I'll pour it for you. Otherwise, it'll be ethanol with flavor packs like usual. In that case, I'll take two ounces of ethanol with a whiskey pack. But could you at least pretend it's scotch? All right, here's your fine scotch, sir. I'll never understand what you Earthers like about ethanol. You drink, you fight, you puke, and you sleep. Maybe we wouldn't puke so much if you cleaned your drink nozzle between our drinks and the Zenuvian arsenic. At least we don't melt when we drink like those gelatinous androgenoids. Ah, save it. They don't complain about you getting drunk. Let them get diluted in peace. Listen to you, the perfect spokes being for interplanetary harmony. Yeah, yeah, just wave me down when you're dry. I scan the room. It was a thin crowd. On a space station, there were all kinds of schedules. Morning for you might be lunchtime or bedtime for someone else. On top of that, there were species here that came from planets with days from 17 hours to 3 days Earth equivalent. I just happened to catch the place in one of those rare lulls, or there are just a handful of append or appendage with digits of your choice full of hard drinkers drinking hard. And I was aiming to get hard. Er, uh, I mean... Yeah, I'll stand by that. Hey, Dick. What's a shady guy like you doing in a classy joint like this? There she was. The woman I had spent all night watching here in my bar. 
Did she ditch her husband to find me? Did she know I was watching? Did the two of them set up this whole thing just slowly poisoning myself like everyone else? What's the deal? Your husband fall asleep on you? Watching? Husband? Oh, wait. This was a different woman. Not even the same species. Just my way of checking if you're still available. Smooth recovery. You realize you're saying this all out loud, right? What? Never mind. I guess I'm not that desperate for company after all. She'll be back. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. Not too many options for stimulating conversation available. Maybe one less than there was before. I guess I should get back to my office and hope some business will walk through the door. Sir, are you Dick Rogers' space detective? And there she was, the woman I had spent all night watching, here, in my bar. Did she ditch her husband to find me? Whoa, deja vu. Of course, they sounded the same. I used that voice for all females on my translator. Yeah, that's me, and what is a classy dame like you doing in a place like this? Oh. I'm here looking for you. My name is Twilu, and I know my breeding partner hired you for tonight, but after he got home, something awful occurred. Also, the translator outputs the word dame in my language as a condescending form of address for a female. Perhaps the algorithm is flawed? I don't know. People claim it's condescending in my language, too. Anyway, dollface, about what happened, and how can I assist a heavenly creature like you? I'm having second thoughts about your suitability to assist me with this issue. Well, you've already taken the time and effort to track me down. You might as well lay out the facts and I'll see what I can do for you. <sighs> I will provisionally continue. When my partner returned home, he confessed his suspicions, which led to his hiring a private detective to observe me tonight. We had a heated discussion about our feelings given the situation his insecurities had created, but... We mostly worked out our differences. You mean you had a fight? I mean exactly what I said. I take great pains to communicate precisely. I can tell. Uh, what happened next? He went to cleanse himself in the sonic shower before consuming sustenance. I entered the sustenance preparation chamber to add thermal energy to the food I had reserved for his eventual consumption. But then I heard a sound that I was neither familiar with nor expecting. I went to investigate and found that our home had been invaded by unknown beings. Like unknown species? No, merely beings I was unfamiliar with. They had discovered him in the shower and were nearly finished forcibly extracting several of his major vital organs when I surprised them. They attempted to dispatch me with a particle beam, but I found cover behind our large seating appliance. Then they fled. Just like that? I am summarizing. Go on. I summoned law enforcement officers to investigate and, with any luck, apprehend the offending beings. When the officers arrived, they did not seem to believe the narrative as presented, and implied that I dispatched my partner in a fit of rage. They did, however, make a thorough search of our dwelling to collect evidence. Then they advised me that they would contact me to discuss the case. I feel that their preliminary appraisal of the situation was flawed and unfair to me as a victim of the situation, so I choose to seek outside help. A brief search of the station directory provided you as an alternative to official law enforcement, and I sought you out. It's only been an hour and a half since your partner called me off, and he wasn't even home yet. All that happened since then? Yes. Things occurred swiftly. The officer who arrived to investigate was one of those new androids. Okay, I mean, I can come take a look at the place if the cops haven't blocked off the crime scene. They have completed a thorough investigation and released the space for my continued occupation. That must have been very efficient investigation. I guess we should get over there and look at things before the scene gets too stale, then. We could share your conveyance if you are amenable. Yeah, I'll pull the shuttle around. Her story added up about as well as Voltarian algebra. I mean, sure, the creeps could have broken in and killed her husband pretty quickly. But if I had to describe the station cops in just one word, I guarantee I wouldn't use the words fast or efficient. I can't picture things changing that much just because they switched to android officers. It didn't take me too long to pull the shuttle up, so I didn't have much time to mull things over. So, if your breeding partner is dead, I guess that means you're single? 
If you make even one more comment along those lines, our business arrangement will be ended with no financial compensation. I guess she wasn't in the mood for small talk. Good. That'll give me more time to think. At this point, the real story is probably one of two scenarios. Number one, the whole story is a ruse and the pair of them are trying to lure me back for purposes of their own. Hopefully a three-way. Or number two, the murder really happened, but the station cops haven't been there yet. Guess there's no way to tell until we get there. You seem unaware that you're speaking aloud. What? You have exhibited a tendency to speak aloud as if to a confidant or audience. It is extremely off-putting. Uh, you mind if I put on the radio while we're underway? I have no objections. Well, folks, it's time for another message from our beneficent sponsors at Zithrax Industries. If you've been keeping your eyes open, I'm sure you've noticed the increase in bums and layabouts begging for scraps along our streets instead of working for an honest living. Well, we've noticed it too, and the fungineers at Zithrax Industries have cooked up something to help those lazy tramps give it a good long thing. Next time you're accosted by a dirty vagabond begging for change, you can reach into your pocket and retrieve the Think Piece. It's the same size and weight as a silver dollar, but with one press of its discreet stud, it'll deliver 10,000 volts to the next greasy palm it crosses. And once they've been shocked back to reality, they can read the message engraved into it. Messages like, without labor, nothing prospers. Here's your handout. Get a job! And many more. Sure, it costs more than a dollar, but this isn't about saving money. It's about teaching a lesson. The Think Piece, another wacky invention from the Zithrax Fungineers. And now we return to the thrilling adventures of Dick Rogers, Space Detective. And before you knew it, I had the shuttle docked and we were there, outside her hatch door. And what do you know? Police tape. Maybe they had gotten to the crime scene after all. Or more likely, she had gotten a hold of the tape herself. Please enter and investigate the premises for yourself. I will be in the Senate preparation area. As I started to look around, things really did seem to be lining up with her story from the bar. The couch was toasted from the particle blast, and what do you know? Residue from the fluid neutralizer that the station cops used to clean up blood, vomit, cytoplasm, whatever. Maybe I was way off on this one. It may just be possible that this one time they got a crime scene process before the funeral. Uh, what did the killers look like? Two of them were Bulgarians, and the third was an Earther like you. They were all dressed in their society's version of semi-formal business attire, and the Earther was carrying the organ extraction tool. What's an organ extraction tool? It is a tool of efficient violence which was developed on my planet in less civilized times. Unfortunately, our society did not abandon this tool as we advanced. Instead, a cultish obsession sprang up around it, partially driven by media portrayals and partially driven by political contributions by manufacturers. It became a very polarizing topic in our society to the point where a large part of our populace felt that it was a necessity to own them simply to protect themselves from violence caused by others who would misuse their own organ extractors. Even though there was a preponderance of data showing that the organ extractors were more dangerous to the owners and their familial groups. That sounds like a very serious problem. Hey, do you know where I could get one of those? You know... For safety. You can purchase them almost anywhere goods are sold, and there is effectively no regulations. Good to know. Good to know. Anyway, did any of the intruders look familiar to you at all? To the best of my knowledge, I never observed these beings previously. And when you walked in on them, did they seem surprised? Or did it seem like they knew you were there, but figured they could finish them up before you discovered them? None of them was performing sentry duty, so I would hypothesize that they were unaware of my presence in the dwelling. And then one of them tried to shoot you. Yes, you can see the evidence in the damage to our seating unit. Looks like they had the beam on a pretty wide pattern. Underneath the extinguishing powder, it looks like half the couch is charcoal and the rest of it is at least scorched. I moved very quickly to seek shelter. And then they just ran away and left you behind knowing you could identify them to the cops? 
After they discharged their beam, the fire suppression system was activated along with its accompanying alarm. They triggered the beam again to destroy the security camera, which used to occupy the ceiling corner, and fled. They knew as well as anyone that once the fire alarm is triggered, the station authorities are automatically dispatched to investigate. And the camera they destroyed... Where does it send the footage to? The files are stored on a drive in the multi-purpose room located through that hatch, but it was a wired connection, and the energy from the beam traveled through the cable and permanently expunged all the files stored therein. Hmm, that's quite a stroke of luck for them, what with most security cameras being wireless these days. It has caused an unfortunate impediment in the successful investigation and prosecution of this crime. Did your breeding partner have any enemies. It seems likely that every living being has made the acquaintance of those who do not wish them well, but to the best of my knowledge, there were none that harbored animosity sufficient to seek the forcible termination of his life. Well, I guess I should get some pictures of the crime scene. Damn, I must have left my camera in the shuttle. Are you all right here by yourself while I run to get it? I will experience no difficulty. Okay, I'll be back. Do you ever see that movie? It's a total classic. I am largely unfamiliar with classical Earth cinema. Never mind. Her story was looking like it might check out after all. Too bad the hard drive got fried when they torched the camera. This could be a real open and shut case. Damn. The camera wasn't here either. Now where the hell did I leave it? Did I leave it at the stakeout again? That's like the fifth time this month. At least I can connect to my phone to it anywhere in the station with that wireless like the security camera should have been. Wait a minute. If my camera is still stuck out there, I can access the video files. Here we go now. Just shuttle backward through the video. There's the two of us showing up. Back farther. There's the cops. Oh, hey, they did send one of those robot officers. No wonder they had the scene processed so quickly. Back, back, okay, here's him getting home. The argument, he goes into the bathroom, there's Twilu, whoa, that must be the organ extractor. That looks so badass. I need to get me one of those, but it's her carrying it into the bathroom. Oh, damn, the way it ripped through his carapace and started pulling out the gooey stuff. I definitely need one of those. No, Dick, focus. She's the murderer, and now she's got the particle blaster, and there goes the extinguishing powder. She's opening a hidden bulkhead to stash the weapons. I guess I've got her dead to rights. I should probably call the cops, but who wants to give them all the glory? I'll show her the video, and she'll have no choice but to follow me to the station. I'll just have to make sure I get between her and the hidden bulkhead. Have you located your camera? I know exactly where it is. And in fact, it's been there ever since the stakeout your breeding partner had me on. And it's been recording the whole time. I've got all the evidence I need to corroborate their suspicions. And you're going to come with me to the station. It was you all along. You killed him and stashed the weapons in here. Foolish, Earther. You will find that I have the particle weapon trained on you already. Move slowly towards the seating unit and keep your appendages in plain view. If you had any sense, you would have deduced that bringing you to the crime scene would be part of my plan all along. But I saw you put them in here! I did not, of course, leave the incriminating tools where I had hidden them. It was the height of simplicity to bring the organ extractor along when I sought you out. If a future existed in which you had the opportunity to search your shuttle, you would find that I had already secreted it inside. Hey, can you hang on for a second? I'm going to switch the translator off the sexy voice now that I know you're evil. What? I override the default voice module on my translator so I can set voices I like for people. Exactly the type of frivolity I have come to expect from your flawed human mind. Definitely not that voice. Since you will be dead soon, I will indulge you. Fun, but no. Let's try this one. This ploy to extend your life is nearing the end of my patience. Perfect. 
okay, so what happens now? The police will be summoned again when, after wresting the weapon away from you, I will discharge it in self-defense. It will appear to them that you have returned in an attempt to silence the only witness to your earlier crime. But why? I was only doing a job, and your breeding partner only hired me for it because of how much he loved you. My breeding partner was as foolish as you, and his stupidity and insecurities had become more than I could bear. I would have resorted to legal means to dissolve our union had it not been for the gas mining company he owned. I designed his business strategy in its entirety, along with some of his more vital equipment. Unfortunately, in legal dissolution, I would be deprived of the financial benefits of those designs. Now, I will step directly into control, and the stupidity that the two of you have displayed has only made the process simpler for me. Do you really think you can get away with it? How do you know I haven't already backed up the files to my home data storage? Which I totally did. I did that. The overconfidence with which you re-entered my dwelling tells me that you are an impulsive and short-sighted man. I would, and in fact am, willing to wager my future freedom against my evaluation of your mental capabilities. I implore you to stay very still. I am now going to train this particle beam onto a vital area and dispatch you, but my narrative will appear more believable if I fire from a very close distance. If you will cooperate in this final moment, I will make sure that your passing occurs with absolute minimum of pain and with great alacrity. Lucky for me, human reflexes are some of the fastest in the galaxy. I had plenty of time to pull out my gun and shoot her. It's never easy to kill a creature as beautiful as she was, but it's surprising how often evil hides behind the mask of beauty. Like just about all of my exes. I'm sure with my help and the videos, the cops just might be able to sort it all out. Of course, not all of the videos will be useful for the cops. I'm sure I can figure out what to do with them. That was quite the close shave, dear listener. Thank you for tuning in for another thrilling episode of The Adventures of Dick Rogers, Space Detective. Brought to you by those fun folks at Zithrax Industries. All of the greatest space adventures in the world have at least one thing in common. If you follow them long enough, they eventually end in death. Hopefully it'll be a long time before your adventure ends, but if you want to be prepared for that inevitable conclusion, there's only one name you need to remember. Zithrax Industries. The company that puts the fun in funerals. With our latest line of funerary urns, we have you covered no matter what your price range or preference. From utilitarian urns meant for burial, to decorative models meant for permanent display, to our new space burial urns, there's a model that will provide you with secure comfort for your eternal slumber. Write Zithrax Industries today for your free catalog. Launch fee not included with space burial urns. All launches must be approved by the appropriate governmental bodies. The Thrice Holdings Limited assumes no responsibility for evil clones or alien doppelgangers resulting from extraterrestrial interception of space burial urns. Welcome back. Wait, did that episode actually have a resolution? Yeah, they actually did wrap up the story this time. But we better not get used to that. I guess I hadn't read that script before. Do we have any others that don't end in a cliffhanger? Maybe one? I'm sure as we continue digging into it, we'll find more scripts that resolve. If you say so. Anyway, that episode did give us a nice glimpse into the wider universe of the show. And the wider universe of Dick's sexual preferences. (laughs) Yes. And as far as we can tell, it must have been a pretty widely referenced script, at least among future writers. We haven't found any earlier references to Zenglorpians so far, and while the species itself doesn't appear very frequently in the future, many later scripts did reference them or products that their species made. Yeah, they must have been big on industrialization and exporting in-universe. Is it still called exporting if it's off your planet? I feel like there should be a different word. Something, like, bigger. Yeah, I'll have to do some research. On behalf of the other nerds and myself, we'd like to thank you for joining us for our third episode of Dick Rogers Space Detective. And we hope you're having as much fun rediscovering these nearly lost gems as we are. 
if you are, or even if you're not, make sure to tell every carbon-based life form you encounter about this podcast. And follow us on social media. Hit them with the handles, Skeevy Mike. We're on Facebook at Dick Rogers Pod, on Instagram at Dick Rogers Space Detective, and Twitter at Rogers Space. And you can join the nerds on Patreon at patreon.com slash space underscore detective. And make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, which will make it easier to join us for your next dick appointment. Same space time, same space place. <laughs> <laughs> She always laughed like that. She wrote the send off. I think it's because even though it's the same time and place, the Earth is moving through the universe along with the solar system, so it's never really the same place. I didn't have her figured for that deep of thing. Oops, we're still recording. Now oh, cue the credits. This episode's nerds are Wendy Wilworth as Joanna, Angela Ventress as Eleanor, Michael Storm as Mike Nutley, Logan Wright as Dick Rogers. Nicholas Johnson as bartender, announcer, and client. Jessica DeMaria as female and twilight. The Zen Glorpian Problem was written by Nicholas Johnson. Sound design by Michael Storm. Music by Nicholas Johnson. Audio editing by Nicholas Johnson.